Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We are coming, well, I, I, no, we're not going to be finishing anytime soon, probably. <laughs> this series, we've been on this series a while. I thought maybe we're coming to the end, but uh, you know what? Maybe we're not. Maybe we'll just keep going. We're teaching out of my book called God the Revealer of Secrets. Yes. And we're talking about how to know the will of God yes. for our life. And how many of you know that he, he's looking to reveal yes. his yes. plan yes. for your life? He's not looking to hide it. Right. He's looking to reveal it. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be in the position to where we can receive. And you say, what's that position? A hearing position. Right. Amen. Right. It's not something we have to earn necessarily, but it's something we do have to on purpose put ourselves at a place where we can hear yeah. what he's saying to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been using in this series, starting with 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 14, the Amplified Classic Translation. God is speaking and he said, and if you will go my way, how many of you know that would be his will, taking the paths that he has for your life, that he authored for you. If you will go my way, keep my statutes and my commandments, then I will lengthen your days. And uh, so his plan carries long life. Yes. Amen. Amen. So aren't you, aren't you glad to know you don't have to come up with a plan of success for your life? Yes. He already has a plan and it has his full blessing on it. Yes. Why? Because it came out of him. Yes. As we feed on the word and as we take time in his presence, praying in communion with him and spending time praying in the spirit, his plan unfolds to us right. more and more and more. And it's, and it's a continually unfolding plan. Uh, meaning this, he's not going to tell you the whole thing all at once. Why? Because we're walking this life by faith. And so we're just constantly just day by day following the plan he has for our life. Amen. Go with me if you would to Psalm chapter 127. And verse one, and if I could say, if there's any verse, any scripture that I use as the golden text for our ministry, it's this one, Psalm chapter 127 and verse one, it reads this way, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So know this, that this verse shows us that a house can be built and the Lord not be in it. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain mm -hmm. that build it. I don't want my life to be full of vain labor. Yes. And I don't want my vain labor to build me something that he's not occupying yes. or that he didn't yes. author. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we could see this, that every man evidently has the ability to build something apart from the Lord, yeah. but it will be void of the greatest blessing, his fullest blessing. Listen, uh, if someone goes, if someone plans something for their own life, God is so good. God is so merciful. He will bless it as far as he can, yes. but it's just best to, to follow his plan because it's already blessed. Yes. 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 It's already blessed. And I've come to the point and I've been at this point a long time. I don't want to occupy anything he didn't build. Right. Yes. If he didn't build it, I don't want it. Yes. I don't care how beautiful it may be. I don't care how inviting it may look. 
If God doesn't build it and he didn't author it for my life, I don't want it. Amen. And we won't hear God's plan for our life telling him what we want. Yes, that's true. Now listen to that. This is huge to understand. We won't hear his plan for our life by us just telling him what we want. We can go to God and say, God, I'm here to know what your plan is. And this is what I'm doing. This is what I've got. This is what, and he will, he will not override anything you've said because he's a perfect gentleman. He will not work uninvited and telling him what we want is not his invitation to speak. Now listen to that. Us telling him what we want is not his invitation to speak. And he would just sit and listen to you, tell him what you want. And then because he doesn't say anything different, people think, well, see, he, he told me to do that. No, he wasn't invited to speak. So I've always learned Don't go to God telling him what I've decided. I won't hear from him telling him what I've decided. I go to hear him saying, I haven't decided. I'm here to hear from you so that I will know what is the proper choice. Amen. Amen. Because we can build a house and him be left out of the whole thing. Amen. Amen. Except the Lord build. Except the Lord build. Know this. When the Lord builds, it's a process. Yes. Yes. And unless we go through his process, he, we won't be occupying what he's building. Right. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Amen. So let's just lay aside our own plan mm-hmm. to take time to hear what he has for us, to know the greatness of the plan that he already has for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 26. We're going to read something that Paul stated 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. And listen, we invite you to get your notebook, get something to take notes on because we trust that God says something to you that helps you in your own race. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26, Paul made this statement. He said, I therefore so run not as uncertainly. Mm -hmm. Look at this. He's, um, He's saying I'm running, but I have clarity. The Amplified Classic translation of verse 26, uh, it reads this way. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. Right. I'm very definite yeah. in, in my aim, mm-hmm. in the direction I'm going. I'm not running until I know what steps to take yes. in the running. Yes. I don't. I'm certainly no athlete (laughs) or world-class athlete, but I've watched stuff. (laughs) Does that qualify for anything? I've watched stuff. (laughs) Um, And many different um, sports that have a track, a course, whether it's a marathon race, whether it's just some, a shorter course, they will study the course before the race. They'll look at the turns. Where are the turns? Where are the low places? Where are the high places? Where are the places of acceleration? Where are, where is the course going steep? Why they need to know what they need to apply to the course. Um, very seldom would something be called for, would you be in a sport that has a course that they would not go to know certainly what the course looks like. This is what Paul says, I don't run uncertainly. I don't run without definite aim. I know what my course looks like. I'm not guessing and going. Now, knowing what the course looks like doesn't mean you know the whole thing. It means you know the next step at least the next step. But Paul is saying, I don't run. I don't make a step hoping this is the direction. I make a step knowing this is the step to take. That's what he's meaning. Um, We need to make sure that we're making purposeful steps. He didn't live scattered. Paul did not live scattered, jumping from one thing to the next. He had the clarity before he took the step. And no sportsman, no athlete, no runner is going to run accurately 
if they are not sure of their course. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. He knew what was a he- what he was headed for in his right. earthly yeah. mission. Yeah. Paul knew. Yeah. Um, missing the mark and getting off course will leave us dissatisfied. Mm-hmm. Many times people think they're dissatisfied with their job or they'll think they're dissatisfied in their marriage, or they'll think they're dissatisfied with other aspects of their life when much of the time, if they're off course, their insides will be dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And the devil would love to hold up these other arenas to make you think, well, it's your marriage or well, it's your job when really it's a missed course of his plan. The devil wants you to try adjust the wrong thing so that you get further off course. Um, If there's dissatisfaction on the inside, don't apply it to an arena. Mm -hmm. Go wait before God and find out why am I dissatisfied? Why am I dissatisfied? Because something that might have been satisfying before Mm -hmm. can after time, if God is redirecting or adding something different to you, what used to satisfy can now dissatisfy. Right. Um, because there are changes in, in our course yes. along right. the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know something that my spiritual father talked about. He, God had him to pastor Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen. He pastored for 12 years and he pastored multiple locations mm-hmm. um, through the years. And um, he was pastoring at a church and he said, and this was, I think, the last church that he pastored before he started his traveling ministry. And he went to God one day and he said, God, he said, my wife and I, my family and I, we're living better than we've ever lived in the sense of we have more finances than we've ever had. We're living in a nicer uh, parsonage than we've ever lived in. Everything is better than it's ever been. But he said, but I'm more dissatisfied inside than I've ever been. Why? Now, see, that's spiritual sensitivity and spiritual wisdom. He he knew because if you don't, if you're not sensitive to your spirit, you'll think that dissatisfaction is from something out in the natural and you'll start trying to change natural things. Or you'll, if I could say this, start complaining against natural things when natural things aren't the problem. Right, right. And he had the spiritual sensitivity to go to God. Why am I dissatisfied inside? And God began to talk to him because you have come to the end of your pastorate. And now I have another direction for you. So he recognized that when you sense change, that's not the, that's not just so you can say, oh, I sense change. It's so you can go here change. You can go aside with God and hear what is coming ahead. You can sense it and still not hear it. You can sense it and still not have clarity of what you're sensing. So we have to take time to wait before him to become um, accurate in the way he's leading us. Amen. So know this, that when you're where God told you to be, there will be the grace to be there. But if the, if the, if there's new direction coming, the grace will change to what's coming and the grace won't stay with where you've been. Does that make sense? So if you stay where you've been Mm -hmm. beyond the grace and there's no longer grace, then you're dissatisfied because there's not the grace to be there anymore. Because God may have you in a place for a time and then he can change that. But just know this, he's not changing it every month, every year. (laughs) That's called living inaccurately to be changing stuff all the time. And, and guessing and going. We have to hear and go. Amen. 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 Now, um, turn with me, if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, um, Paul gave crucial instructions to Timothy so that Timothy would spend his life running the right race. Not the rat race, the right race. <laughs> What's the rat race? Meaning you're just haphazard, missteps. That's what we would call the rat race, right? 
the right race. And um, Paul was a spiritual father to Timothy. Mm -hmm. Timothy was a student to Paul. So Paul is telling him how to live accurately. Yes. Now we know this, Paul is called to fivefold ministry. Timothy was called to fivefold ministry. I'm not saying that this is something, I'm not saying this because someone is called or not called to fivefold ministry. I'm saying the same steps they took will work for anyone, yeah. Yeah. anyone. Mm -hmm. So 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, the Amplified Classic Translation. Paul said to Timothy, till I come, devote yourself to public and private reading, to exhortation, preaching, and personal appeals, mm -hmm. and to teaching and instilling doctrine. Now he's talking to Paul. Paul is talking to Timothy as a minister, right? I want you to see something here that's not pertinent just to ministers. I want to focus on two words. He says, devote yourself. Yes. Devote yourself. He's telling Timothy, devote yourself to things pertaining to teaching and ministry, mm -hmm. to preaching and teaching. Now, if you're not called to fivefold ministry, that specific may not be applying to you, but what does apply to everyone, devote yourself yes. Yes. to whatever you're called to. Right. The only way we will ever fulfill it is being devoted to it. Yes. 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 We have to be devoted to it, not divided right. in our affections, yes. not divided in our direction. We have to devote ourselves, And yes. this is the main thing Paul was telling Timothy, be devoted yes. to what you're born for. Yes. Be yes. devoted yes. to what you're called to. Yes. Be devoted to your place yes. in the body of Christ. Yes. That belongs to every one of us, yes. being Amen. devoted to it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, a man must do the right thing toward, his, toward the plan of God to fulfill the plan of yes. God. Now, the plan of God for your life came out of God himself, yes. right. Right? right? To nurture and to be nurtured in the plan, we can only find that nurturing in God, mm -hmm. yes. in his word, yes. Yes. in communion with him. Yes. No matter how, no matter what course your race takes, mm -hmm. don't leave him out. Yes. Yes. Don't leave yes. out the word. Yes. Yes. That course, that race needs to be run nurtured yes. by the word mm -hmm. and nurtured by time with him in yes. prayer. Amen. 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 Because that race came out of him. It was authored by him yes. and it's going to be strengthened by him. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I'm not just talking to those that are called to the fivefold right. ministry. Right. This is absolutely part of what those are called to the fivefold ministry must do. Right. But you can be a businessman and you, God assign you to a, pers uh, a personal race that includes the business world. Yes. That doesn't mean leave him out That's right. 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 just because you're anointed or graced for the business world. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because you can be very much called to it. And, but don't leave out the word. So don't leave out Amen. time with him. Yes. Uh, worship him. Yes. Love the word. Yes. Worship Amen. him. Thank him for, Father, I thank you for my business. I thank you for the, the customers. Worship him for don't leave him out just because you're, you may not be fivefold ministry. Right, right. Don't just think these are things that just a minister is to do. A believer draws his very strength and, and refreshing in his race from the word of God in the presence of God. Amen. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. And again, I'm, this is just the next verse. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic Translation. Paul is still giving Timothy instruction and he says, do not neglect the gift which is in you. And then he's taught, he talks about that this was imparted and it's, it's an endowment. But this is, I'm not talking about the second half of this verse. I want to just focus on the first part. Do not neglect the gift that's in you. Uh, he, I'm not talking about now to see Paul was talking about Timothy as a minister. But look about as us with a, as a believer, right. Right. maybe not called to fivefold ministry. Right. The same thing is true. Don't neglect the yes. truth. Yes. Don't neglect rather the gift that's in you. What's God, what has God called you to? He's gifted you for it. Right. Yes. Don't neglect that gift. Amen. 
a neglected gift blesses no one. People will say, oh, they've got a lot of potential. Potential didn't accelerate anything. No one benefits from potential. Potential will sometimes help people to know uh, a direction to take. I'm talking about in natural life. Uh, if someone has a potential toward music, a potential toward sports, mm-hmm. that that's still not potential is still not the leading of the spirit. Right, right, it's right. still not saying it's the plan of God, yes. but potential that is not developed blesses no one. Right. Yes. And Paul is saying this, uh, and we could say this about a gift: a gift that's developed, uh, that's undeveloped, blesses no one. Yes. So you can be gifted for something and it, and leave it undeveloped, not become skillful with it. Well, in the plan of God, we can't just say, well, this is, this is his plan. uh, The plan of God will automatically come to pass. Not if we neglect developing some things. If you're a businessman, you need to get developed in, uh, in what that business that God's directed you into. Amen. You can't just say, well, I'm, God will just make it a success. You have to develop everything connected with that. Amen. 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 And uh, we have to know this, our place is first in Christ. And we develop who we are in Him first. And then we continue to develop everything connected with the plan of God for our life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, No demon can defeat the man who knows his place in Christ. But neglect can rob us of everything. If we just neglect it, just neglect it. Um, So we have to know who we are in Christ, but we also have to develop and devote ourselves to that which God has called us to. That means we study. We just as a a preacher studies so he can preach, a businessman studies his craft. He studies his, he studies the direction of his profession. Um, John Wesley, who was, um, they call him the founder, of course, of the Methodist denomination. And um, back during his day, he was in England and um, his ministry shook countries. I mean, he, he was skilled in the sense that he, uh, he was administrative. He knew how to line out a plan of the word and train ministers in it. And so he duplicated himself and he was a spiritual father to hundreds and hundreds of pastors and ministers. And because of that, churches sprang up everywhere because he was skillful. He devoted himself to what he was born for. And in devoting himself, he raised up others and others were blessed. When you devote yourself to what you're born for, you bring others along into excellence you'll help bring others into skill for their life. And um, he faced much opposition, John Wesley did, throughout his years of ministry. And one young minister asked him, he said, with all the persecution you have faced in your life, what has been your biggest problem? And John Wesley, older in years now, he answered and said, oh, that's easily, that's easily answered. I'm my biggest problem. Uh No devil, no opposition, nothing. He's, I'm my biggest problem. This statement reinforces or reflects what every man must learn. That is this, we must govern ourselves. If we're to fulfill the plan of God, we have to put our foot to the neck of that in us that would hold us back. What's that? A bad self image. Uh, Just having wrong ways of thinking. We have to renew our minds with the word. We have to keep our bodies under. Let's just take charge. Take charge and uh, of ourselves and devote ourselves. Don't neglect developing what is in us. Um, Paul was warning Timothy to devote himself to the right things so that he would not end up neglecting the gifts God had put in him. We can be very busy with something that doesn't matter. We can be very busy with things that will not help us 
finish our course. Yes. I love what one minister from years, really, I, I believe he was born in the 1800s, but he made this statement. He said, before I take on a task, before I take on a project, I ask myself, how will this assist me in my race? Mm-hmm. If it won't assist me, I'm not interested yeah. in it. When you're younger, um, life looks eternal. <laughs> when you're older, life looks temporal. <laughs> What's that mean? When you're younger, you, you, to you, I've just got years and years and yeah. years in front of me. And this minister recognized, because he was older, he said, I don't have time to waste it or spend it on something that's not part of my race, something that I'm not born for. Amen. So uh, when we live accurately, we purge ourselves. And we purge our daily life of that which is unimportant. And you know what that's called? Consecration. That's part of the flow of consecration. Amen. And our consecration matures as our spiritual life matures and as our spiritual walk develops. Amen. Well, um, we're, we've been teaching out of my book called God, the Revealer of Secrets. We want you to get your copy and you can do that by going to our website at JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy there and we'll get it right out to you. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Jesus gave us the key to his success. He stayed with the plan that God gave him to fulfill. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, God the Revealer of Secrets, you will learn how to know God's perfect will for your life and how to accomplish that divine plan. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Collinsville, Oklahoma at a glorious church with Pastors Chip and Candace Brim, October 6th through the 10th. For more information and to register, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you have received a healing or have any other testimony to share with us as a result of this broadcast, we would love to hear about it. Please call us, write us, or contact us through our website. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. I invite you to join us at World Harvest Church, home of Dufresne Ministries in Marietta, California, located at 23109 Palomar Street, Marietta, California. This is a word and spirit church. Join us in person or online Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. For more information, go to DufresneMinistries.org.